welcome. This is a candidate forum for candidates in District 832, Montemita School District. And uh, my name is Mary Santi. I live outside of the school district, and I'll be moderating for tonight. Tonight's forum is being broadcast live on channel 16, and it will be available for playback on www.scctv.org. League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan volunteer organization that works through education and advocacy. We do not support or oppose any candidate or any political party. We sponsor forums like this so that you, the voters, can get information about the issues that interest you and the candidates that are running. So questions are being collected from the audience. Just raise your hand if you've got a card or if you need a card to write one and hand them to the ushers. We invited all the candidates to be a part of this forum and everyone accepted, so we're happy about that. And I'll introduce them. They are from the left, Gary Bauman, Mike Chevalier, Kevin Donovan, and Julie McGraw. The um, order for speaking is going to be alphabetical for the opening statements, and then afterwards it will be in a random order for the questions and the closing statements will be reverse alphabetical. So we will begin opening statements. The candidates have a minute and a half for your opening statements. We'll begin with Gary Bauman. Uh, my name's Gary Bauman. Uh, I've also known as Scary Gary to my nephews and their kids. About six years ago, I got sick, had cancer. I uh, was hooked up to a machine for a couple of years and they removed some things from me, a leg and other stuff. And I put on about 100 pounds, but I'm still doing good, I'm alive. But I also have melanoma, and it's not the bad one, but they told me I had to wear a hat, long sleeve shirt, collar up, and I was laying there for two years, my hair grew, and I said, well, if I can have my hair covered up and a beard, and it, that'll work. So that's why I look like this. The nieces and nephews, they all tease them about it, but then they say I'm Santa. Um, I, uh, uh, I'm a decorated Vietnam veteran, U.S. Army. I was 20 years old and a tank commander overseas. I come back for um, the schooling, and uh, I come back two days after Saigon fell. I'd been overseas, like I said, for a couple of years, and I didn't have the opportunity to go to school or collect unemployment because the discharge papers, they didn't know what to do with us, and they messed them up, and I couldn't get unemployment, and I couldn't go to school. They finally got it squared away when I was 32, but before then, I went every chance I could get to go to school, I went. Thank you. Now, Mike Chevalier. Hi, thank you. This is my first time doing something like this, so... Forgive me if I sound silly. <laughs> my name is Mike Chevalier. I moved in here, uh, moved to Montemite with, with my wife in 2001. Had no idea what kind of a city this was. And I frankly, I lived in Minneapolis for many years and was used to the, the hustle and bustle and the lights on and the noises and stuff. And when I first moved here with my wife, it was actually quiet and dark at night and it was really weird. Um, my, our, my kids are 14 and 11 and uh, they were growing up in the district. We had no idea about the, about the district when we moved here, by the way, but we started sending our kids to school, and um, I absolutely fell in love with the teachers here. And um, so four years ago, or oh, over four years ago, or under, anyway, I thought, well, golly, you know, my kids are in the school. I love the teachers. I think the school district's doing great things, and um, I think I'd like to see if I could be part of this in some other way. And so I saw there was an opening for a board. And so then I... I just I submitted my name to run uh, for school board, and and I was uh, by, I was unopposed. There was nobody else running, so luckily I got I got voted for, and and I've been in it. And it's been a heck of a lear learning curve being uh, on a school board, and uh, but I've been really getting into it, and uh, just I just love it. The school district's amazing, and 
Thank you for having me. Thank you. Kevin Donovan. Hi, thank you. Uh, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for having this forum. And I want to thank the audience who got here despite the monsoon. My name is Kevin Donovan, and I'm a candidate for the Montemedi School Board. Uh, I have been um, on the school board for the last 15 years, 13 years, excuse me. And I wish to share the why uh, I wish to serve on the Montemedi School Board. We need to have all of our students develop 21st century skills and become the highly educated workforce of the future. I have the, had the honor to serve in this capacity, and um, I really believe in Montemedi schools. We live in a very privileged community, and we are able to provide an excellent education to our students. Both of my children graduated from Montemedi schools, Sean in 2007 and Bridget in 2010. Uh, Sean is off as a, a fashion designer in New York, and my daughter is an auditor at the Midnight. It is said that, that, that whom much is given, much is expected. I have a strong passion for public education and wish to give back and serve our communities. Former Judge Sandra Day O'Connor said that public education is the cornerstone of democracy. Twenty years ago, I taught an education omnibus class at Wildwood. I had second graders. One student at the end of the session wrote me a note saying, Dear Mr. Donovan, thank you so much for your class. I learned a lot. Signed, your buddy Owen. This is why I wish to serve and why I'm so passionate about public education. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Julie McGraw. Good evening. Thank you for having us me tonight. Um, I'm Julie McGraw, and I've lived in Matamita with my family for 19 years as we moved to our current home in 1999. My husband, Joe, and I have two daughters, Hannah, who is a 2017 grad who is attending UW-Madison and studying engineering, and Isabel, who's a sophomore at Matamidi. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in horticulture from the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, and I worked in the horticulture industry for more than 15 years before focusing on being a mother and volunteering in the community and for our schools. I feel very fortunate to live in a community that is so supportive of our schools. I was appointed to the board in July of 2014 and elected to a four-year term that November. My interest in being on the board stems from my belief in the public education system. I became very interested in board work after serving as a levy co-chair in 2013. I'm honest and care deeply about our community and our students. With my background in science, I strongly support fact and evidence-based approach to decision-making versus opinion and emotion. I have learned a great deal about the role of school boards in the past four years. We focus on the big issues. We make policy, we set goals, we approve budgets, and we engage the public with the goal of improving student achievement while keeping the schools safe yet welcoming. I hope to be given the opportunity to continue on the board. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll turn to questions now. And uh, they'll rotate. I'll have, it's a random order. The first one to start is Mike Chevalier with his first question. What do you see as the top two challenges facing our district? And what do you propose to address them? Well, I think that the, the top two challenges would be uh, I'm going to say that our financial situation has to be improved. We don't have a real strong tax base and business in this city, um, and so the tax burden falls more upon our, our, uh, our residents. And uh, we are in a financial situation right now, and uh, our costs have gone up, and our uh, the, our in influx of has, has gone down. So I think the, the biggest challenge is to get our school back in a financial health. And uh, I think the second thing would be to be sure that we're working on our equity journey and uh, making that part of our upcoming um, uh, strategic plan. Thank you. Next, Julie McGraw. I echo what my fellow board member Mike Chevalier said um, in that the state has simply not kept up with funding our schools adequately. If you, if you look at a graph from the Department of Education, it states that if, if the state had kept up with its obligation with keeping pace with inflation, we would have about $590 more per student, which would make our, 
our education system in Madamirai a lot different. The second issue I would say um, is also strategic planning with our new superintendent. So um, updating our, the direction that we see our district going. So, Okay. Um, Gary Bauman. Uh, I agree with the money, except it's a little different here because we've got the open enrollments that's killing us. I can give you examples. I pay $3,100 for the levy every year for my house. The next block over is Stillwater School District. They pay 19 Same house, same value, everything. Last year it was 3000 for us. It was 1600 for them. The year before it was over three grand for us again, and it was $1,500. We're almost $20,000 more I've paid than the people from Stillwater School District that because I'm in Matamidi and they got to send their kids to Matamidi. We only get six grand from the state. We're educating them at about 10. The taxpayers in this district are making up the difference and we'll never keep up with the money as long as open enrollment keeps coming in. Thank you. Thank you. And Kevin Donovan. Well, I'm going to go with funding, and funding, um, we have several challenges in that area. Gary talked about one of them. We are commercially poor. We do not have a lot of business, and so that means our, our resident homeowners have to pick up a bit more. So one of the, the strategies that's been out there a few years is how do we uh, equalize funding uh, across the different districts so that it's fair. So funding is an issue. We cannot do the work we need to do if we cannot keep up with the consumer price index, as Julie mentioned. The other piece is the strat plan. We've not had one for the last uh, nine years. And I think that we, we have to have that vision of what it is we want to be. Jim Collins talks about the biggest uh, threat to great is good. We are good school district, and we need to start thinking as if we can, we have uh, definite room to grow and uh, we should have a mindset with a strat plan that gets us there thank you does anyone have something to add rebuttal or further thoughts um, I, I would have a, a slight rebuttal to um, the open enrollment um, argument um, that Gary made um, so I understand that our taxes are higher as Kevin explained because we're property poor but Without open enrollment, we may not have a school district. And um, it would be a major financial detriment to lose 25% of our, of our budget by not having our, our uh, open enrollment. So, anyway. any further? I, oh, um, yeah, 25% is a word you hear. When they went from 8% to 14% was 2004 and 2007. Like I say, I'm paying almost 20 grand more than what the, the next, next district over for Stillwater is. Um, I, I just don't think that's right. And we're not talking 25%. I say we cut back some, not all. But I, if you decided to cut back everybody from White Bear Lake, have a lot of people down there at the legislators complaining. Thank you. Any anyone else? Okay, we'll go to the next question. And Kevin Donovan, you you begin the answers. Should school board members seek information from teachers to learn how things are going in the schools? Absolutely. That that um, we don't do this work in a vacuum. We need to have all of our constituency from citizens to students of which I see a few represented here tonight and teachers and administrators we, we need to we need to get that information and so we depend upon uh, all of you to let us know what we need to do as school board members thank you and next is Mike Chevalier um, the question was uh, do we actively seek out should you seek out information from teachers to learn how things are going in yes, the schools? Yes, the answer is absolutely. Teachers, I love the teachers as I said at my opening, 
Um, they're the reason that we're here. They're the reason that we have the district we have. If we didn't have these wonderful teachers, we wouldn't have this wonderful district. That's just a fact. Um, the community, or everybody in the community, the business, are all stakeholders as well. We take in, we ask people all the time. The community, this isn't in a vacuum, like Kevin said. We are out there and we are transparent and we believe in it. Julie McGraw. So I would focus that question on the process of doing that. And so um, typically we have a set of board norms that we follow that um, if you were going to look for information, you would go through the superintendent and um, ask for information that way and then ask for permission to speak with the teachers. But the teachers provide us the greatest feedback. I agree. Gary Bauman. I agree wholeheartedly that the teachers are everything there. Um, the school board, we set policy, or the school board sets policy. They don't implement it. That's the, the superintendent that does that work. But the teachers, I, said, I can't tell you how great they are. I've talked to a lot of them. Don't know them really personally, but I've talked to them, and they're the reason I, the school is like it is, number one. Give them the credit that they're due. Thank you. Anyone something to add? All right, that, go on to the next question. And Julie McGraw will begin this one. What should the school district be teaching students who are not good in academics, math, English, social studies? Well, we still have to teach them <laughs> math, English, reading, and social studies, math, math and social studies. Um, but we just have to find a way to reach them with different methods and, um, and, and find ways to help them feel a part of, of the system to provide them means to, to fit in and feel successful in their education. So teachers need to be very aware of, of how their students learn and um, I, you know what? I'm not a teacher, so I can't say what the what the uh, what the process would look like. But teachers, that's what they learn when they go to college, I think. <laughs> okay, Gary Bauman. There's other avenues for students that aren't that good in math and that. You can do jobs training. You can do other vocational stuff. I was uh, the president of the Public Employees Council. The teachers, I was their boss. And uh, my vice president at the time was the head of Education Minnesota. We started setting up programs for more involvement with the trades. And I worked with also the trades and labor part of it. And we set up a lot of these schoolings that are around here for students to learn how to become carpenters, plumbers, electricians. And there's other ways to, to go at it. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Chevalier. The answer is absolutely, and we have uh, people that do that. Um, we've got one heck of a great special education para and, and leadership at all of our districts. Um, I happen to know my wife is a special ed para at OH Anderson, and so those children are, that are having difficulty learning or special needs or disabilities are being helped in a terrific manner, and um, I have to say that I, I'm so impressed with how this district does this with their children. Kevin Donovan. Well, the great news is Carl Perkins was just reauthorized recently, and that helps all, all of our students that are going into some kind of vocational work um, get uh, the training that they need to, to, to do that. We also have a great resource called 916, where many of our students can go if they want to do some automotive work. Uh, and, and some other hands-on stuff. Um, 916 is, is a great resource for us. Uh, Monomedi does a workforce pathway collaborative with White Bear Schools, uh, allowing our students to, uh, if they want to go right into the trades, and what does it take to, to become, uh, follow one of these career paths. 10% um, of our students go to Century College. They go to places like St. Paul College, Don Woody, go right into career and they also go into the military. So we try to offer uh, whatever fits that student their best, their best pathway. 
Uh, I'd like to add something about. Uh, All right, Gary would want to. About. Uh, can I add? Yeah, the, the special needs students. I was taking this as the kids that weren't doing good in the other ones. Special needs students, you ain't going to find any better school than Montemedi that takes care of them. There's their number one. That's that's no argument there. But I was explaining what kids that didn't want to or didn't do good in math and that what the other options were for them. Thank any, you. Anyone further? Well, I would just debate that um, even people in the trades need to understand math. So we, we have an obligation to teach people math and how to communicate with everybody. So anyway, that's my rebuttal. Okay, anybody further? All right, the next one, Gary Bauman, you'll begin. Uh oh. Please state one positive effect and one negative effect of federal and state testing requirements on elementary school students. I'm not familiar with it, but I can say that the teachers here have been putting up with the system that's changed three and three times in the last five years with no child left behind and everything and they still come out number one Some students are coming out of here are still the top of the line no matter what what goes on what testing and that and I would dig into it and find out more about the testing if I could but we'll find out thank you thank you Julie McGraw um, I would say that the positive is that it can hold schools accountable who may not be meeting kids' needs. And a negative would be that there's so much of the testing that it causes anxiety in kids. Um, testing is only one way to measure uh, a student's success, and there are many, many other measures that should be taken into account if you were measuring a student's success. Then Kevin Donovan. Standardized tests measure kids who are not standardized. But they are an indicator and they are a tool that should be used and not overused. They're not an adequate measure of the whole child. And so I think we need to keep that in perspective when we look at that. When we look at the reports that come out we need to also understand that there's a lot more there. Um, so again, I'm in favor of use of standardized tests, but that it should be judicious and not overly used. Thank you. Mike Chevalier. Well, I would have to echo, I think, what, if, if you don't mind, what, what Julie said, because I, I do believe that it does show a, a level of accountability, but it does not show all the nuances, which is something that's big deal but uh, there's there is a lot of test anxiety and a lot of kids feel overloaded um, so uh, I would say the same thing that's where I'm at anything further okay my, my favorite question is coming up next and we'll begin with Julie McGraw how well do you feel our students are prepared for participation in civic life how could we do better? I think that the teachers in our, especially in our middle school and high school, do a very good job teaching our kids social studies and, um, and civic engagement. As we see from the audience here, there's clearly some civically engaged students. Um, I think we have some opportunities for kids to be involved in service organizations and um, and and we provide as many opportunities for the kids as we possibly can for for engaging. Thank you. Thanks, Gary Bauman. Next. Ooh, <laughs> the kids. Uh, I do not personally have any kids that were in the school, but all my neighbors' kids. Everybody turned out great. I. Uh, Got no complaints about them. A whole, whole group of them. Um, I, uh, they're prepared. Uh, it's plain and simple. These guys are good. Uh, the students, they're top of the line. Okay. 
Kevin Donovan. Well, I, uh, every time I'm at the uh, schools, especially the middle school, high school, um, I see evidence of great engagement of our students, and I'm always impressed. I don't know either I'm old or they're just being really great, but they hold the door for me as I'm going in. So um, it is, it's, it, every time, I mean, it's just amazing. But one of the things that to be a good citizen, it's becoming involved and volunteering. And we see volunteering happening all the time, raising money for cancer research. Uh, the, kid, the students were out doing car washes the other uh, week, and it was wonderful. I think also the, the students developing a sense of empathy, I believe that that's something that's happening and is alive and well in Montemite High Schools. It's not about learning empathy, it's about experiencing empathy, and our students are doing really well in that area. Thank you. Mike Chevalier. Well, I think our children are coming out, or I think they're being very, uh, very well, they're doing very well, uh, being civically engaged. Um, I think that um, I like the fact that the school district supports their request to hold a march or a rally or something. I think that's great and it's respected. Um, I think that uh, good, citizen, good citizenship also comes from good parenting. Um, and uh, I think that uh, as far as uh, activities, community involvement, empathy, you see things like the, uh, the cancer fundraisers that the school district recently went, went through with the different color days. Uh, the Relay for Life's all over the state um, and the country are a lot, a lot of students are civically engaged in that way and very involved in the community. So I think they're, it's a very good thing that's coming out of our district. I would encourage more of it. Thank you. Any further comments? I will say it's good to see our high school kids here even if you are here for just extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> the next question will start with Mike Chevalier. What's, with school security becoming more of an issue, what steps should be taken to ensure the safety of the students? This is something that the facilities committee and the board has looked at over the last number of years. I've been on the facilities committee and we've done things that are in a proactive measure from a few years ago by replacing uh, windows in uh, classrooms and by the doorways make them very difficult to break through. Um, I think that uh, we are getting, applying for some grants for some updated security funding from uh, the federal government. I think that we're doing a terrific job security wise and I think you can always do better um, and that is that is at the one thing that the board is always aware of and being brought to our attention. Thank you, Kevin Donovan. Security is absolutely a focus that we need to be on with, again, a laser-like focus. We need to make sure that our students can come to our buildings and be safe. We are continually refining that. There are um, mock drills that happen between the different local units of government, between the county, the city, and the schools to make sure and test for various areas where we can improve. Another area that we need to continue to look at is the cybersecurity. It's an issue that didn't really face us more than 10 years ago, but now is becoming more and more an issue for all districts and local units of government around the state. So this is an area we're putting a lot of emphasis on to make sure that our students, again, their data is safe and secure from those that try to get that. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Gary Bauman. Um, the security is, people want the teachers to carry guns, take care of the students. I don't believe in that. Uh, that that's not, not right at all. But the comments that I looked at from the, the district, the kids that wrote in there, they said it feels like a jail when they go to school. I do not know about that. I'm not involved. These guys have been up there with their committees and that, and I don't. If they're complaining about that, it feels like a jail. Something's wrong here. And but then they never say nothing about nothing bad about the teachers. That you hear the complaints, the food's bad, and it feels like a jail. So that that's a good thing. There's there's issues there that got to be looked at that I'm not familiar with right now. Okay, thank you, Julie McGraw. So as I would think about security, I would think about um, facilities. I would think about training, and then I would also think about the cybersecurity. So uh, our district is continually monitoring facilities, updates, 
how we could make things better all the time. Um, it, as far as how it could feel like a prison is that probably that there's all the doors are locked now. So once you get in, you can't get out. So, um, you know, that, that is part of the security. Um, I think there could possibly, you know, I think that we're constantly watching what kind of staff training we should be doing, just always looking for ways to improve. Okay. Improve, improve the training and improve our cybersecurity. Okay. Any further comments from anyone? If I could, I, I would put a guardhouse out there by the road where you come in. <laughs> Open it up more for the students and everything so it'd feel more like a campus than a, than a jail. But that's just my opinion on it, and we'll see where it goes. Okay. Well, we'll turn to the next question. Um, and we'll start with Gary Bauman. Do you support District 832's upcoming operating levy? If no, how do you propose to solve the budget issues and keep cuts out of the classroom? I do not support the levy. I'm voting no against it. I've, uh, I was an auditor. I've been looking at the books. There's 104 pages from 216 to 217 the year. and. Uh, I see there was a $800,000 increase in administration salaries that happened after the, the 17. We had uh, the new budget director come in and stated that they were gonna cut programs and lay off teachers and they sure enough laid off, cut some programs and nine teachers they said were cut. Um, that 800,000 I found out was a 20% increase salary for administration and that's not right at all and what they did was when I found out they went and looked at the five highest administrations in Minnesota and they took the average of those five and that's where they came up with their numbers thank you Mike Chevalier I support the levy I don't know what that he, I, don't, I don't know what he's talking about there. Unfortunately, I'd have to look at him. I'm not in the finance committee, but I do know that I do support the district levy, and uh, our administrative costs are, boy, I think we're at 80, 85% or 89% of everything goes directly to the kids. A smaller, the percentage for the administrative salaries is very, very small. We run a very, the district runs a very lean, tight ship, and... Um, we are in the bind we're in because of the lack of funding from our state and Fed. Julie McGraw. Um, I wholeheartedly support the levy, and I would, I, I am a member of the Finance Committee, and so I have thoroughly examined where our money is spent, and I would encourage anyone who has a question about our budget to contact our business director. Um, we spend only 7% of our budget on administrative costs. And I think that Bill Manazzi may be able to answer anyone's questions who, who, who wants more information about that. Okay, Kevin Donovan. So 83.5% Eighty-three cents, point five of every dollar goes into the classroom. Uh, our district administrator, there, there's a sometimes a confusion where we have school support and district administration. So our uh, percentage is, as Julie said, around seven percent. We are less than Stillwater schools uh, as far as our administrative costs, and we're tied with White Bear. So for a district our size, I would say that's a very strong, those are very strong numbers. Um, I am very much in support of the levy. Our state funding, the 70% of the money that comes from our, for our schools comes from the state. That 70% has not kept up with inflation over the last 16 years. So we're running a $618 per student deficit from that, that lack of keeping up with the consumer price index. Any more to add? Yes, I'd, I'd like to add that uh, they come out and they tell us that we're educating the students here in Montemita at $1,200 less 
than everybody around us in the metro area. Why is that when we're paying so much for our taxes to go there? And as far as the budget director is concerned, I had problems with the guy when he first meeting that he come in and he talked about cutting teachers and programs. I don't want to hear that. As a board member, I would fight to keep every teacher I could. Thank you. Any further comment? Yeah, may I? Mike, I would just say, again reiterate that our tax base is very unique and that we don't have uh, the size of a tax base of a Stillwater or a White Bear. That's why we pay more for our school district. Julie McGraw. But it, it is a fact that our levy is is considerably less than everyone else. Many districts go all the way to the max, and we don't do that because we, we understand that the taxpayer has a higher burden. So. Kevin Donovan. Our, our most liked district that we compare ourselves to is Orno on the west side, and they have a $1,969 voter approved levy authority. Um, they are at the cap, and uh, so we're, obviously a lot less of that but 10 uh, 1043 so we are really able to do a lot with a little but the, the the property issues that you're referencing are similar over in orno i'm not saying it's right it just is okay we go on to the next question and this first this next one we'll start with mike chevalier if you could change one state statute to improve our schools, what would you change? Oh. I would ask, I would change a state statute that uh, allowing the school district to have non-district teachers have their kids go to the district as, as students without having to be part of a lottery. Next, Kevin Donovan. I would look at state funding for special education. That's one of our biggest issues when it comes down to funding. Uh, we need to educate every student that comes in our schoolhouse door, but we are also taking money from the general ed fund to make sure that we can do what we need to and should do for, for all of our students. So we need to have the state fulfill its obligation as far as special ed funding. And by uh, also, the federal government has not done their funding for special ed either um, had if both these were fulfilled we would not be here looking for a levy anytime soon Gary Bauman uh, Mr. Donovan's right it's the state we got to go down there and get some money from them they're not living up to their commitment to pay to schools and that but I guess that's the people's fault that vote we had a Matamina school teacher of the year a few years ago he ran for office didn't even get 40% of the vote out here. And they, they voted in the person that did the shift funding for the schools that put them all in the bind. So it's got to do with the people that are out there to vote. Your vote matters out there. Julie McGraw. Um, I echo Kevin's statement on the special ed cross subsidy and uh, that unfunded mandate for the schools. Um, last year, the Minnesota School Board Association had hundreds of districts in the state sign. Uh, we all signed on to have our Minnesota School Board even go to the federal government to try to get more money, just to try to put more weight behind the machine to help us with that money. If we had that money, we would we'd be in a lot better shape. Any further comments? Just do the, plug, the, 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 the federal funding. That law for IDEA, which is the Individual Disability Education Act, was passed in the law in 1975 to fund special education so we wouldn't be here looking at levy issues. 1975, I was a junior in high school. I actually had more hair and it wasn't gray. And we've not lived up to that obligation to the citizenry of the United States. It's terrible, absolutely is terrible. I can make a comment about, uh, I used to be one of the directors for one of your major political parties uh, some of these people down there that know me and I got elected, there's on the education finance, there's 20 
members. I got four of them elected. On uh, the environmental committee, I had just 24. I had six. Education, taxation, there's only the policy. I only have one, and there's 17 people on there now. But also on the civil law and judicial system, there's 15 of them. Six of them I got elected, and five of them that are prosecutors for cities used to call me boss. But thank you. Okay, we'll go to the next question. We start with Gary Bauman. How do you know the schools are doing good work beyond test scores? Talk to the janitor. <laughs> Talk to a janitor, you'll find out more information than you would anything else. They know what's going on. They know the students. Um, I, I just see the, the number one. It doesn't matter what you come out with. The students, the teachers, they're, they're number one on everything. The students, it doesn't matter what test you throw at them. What do you, what do you got? They're number one. So um, that's it. That's okay. Kevin Donovan. Um, I've had the privilege of uh, looking at some of the different alumni that have come from Montemite High Schools over the years. It's absolutely incredible, uh, absolutely. Uh, we have a young entrepreneur, uh, uh, Eric Brust, who uh, founded Johnny Pops. He's 29 years old and has a company that's they're putting these Johnny Pops in every cooler, or in Costco, everywhere you go. We have ample evidence our students are really succeeding out there and it's amazing where they all are i mean it's it's a wonderful thing but uh i i would say too being in the schools and seeing the students and how they collaborate together how they act uh how they're able to uh, come before a group of people and speak articulately about what it is they're learning it's absolutely impressive every time i hear students talk to us thank you mike chevalier um, I ask my kids, I'm, my kids are in the district, I, uh, I talk to the teachers, I know them, a lot of them. Um, I think uh, the, uh, attending school functions, going to the plays, you know, seeing how kids are interacting with one another, um, wherever they are, uh, community events, I think that um, you can see a lot and glean a lot just by attending something where a bunch of people are gathered and talking and and I mean, just you see the end of a play when all the people get up there and they say, I want to thank so-and-so for this and that, everybody's all, you know. It just seems to me that you can tell, and we are doing very well beyond test scores. Thank you. Julie McGraw. Um, one of the greatest, one of the most important things for students is feeling like they fit in and feel a part of something at school. And we have an 85 to 90 percent participation rate in extracurricular activities, and um, that is something that gives kids great meaning, and they learn a lot from those activities. Um, I think we we look at that. We look at where they go to college. We continuously get feedback from other activities directors and other places when our kids are there. Um, you know, in the last few state hockey tournaments, the kids have won awards as the, you know, the best cheering section or the most respectful or um, it's, it's, it's the evidence that we get uh, that we just continually hear. Um, how, how good the kids are and when you go to the awards ceremony and see where they've the awards they win and the things they've done it's pretty impressive any further comments okay we'll go on to the next question we start with Mike Chevalier how would you stay connected to the community to the school and the schools How do you stay connected? How would you? How would you? As a school board member, apparently. Well, I know a lot of my neighbors. I know a lot of, uh, I walk around. I take bike rides. I see people. Um, I run into people. I talk to people. Um, I feel like I'm a member of this community. Uh, uh, it's really kind of an amazing thing this community but staying connected I've met my children are in the plays and my children do things and I, I like to uh, attend functions um, 
basically it's just you know being around being in front of people just being being out you know and that's how you stay connected and easy to get to julie mcgraw um, I would stay connected with the community by attending functions and putting myself out there and introducing my, to myself to people, um, talking to people when they approach me in the grocery store, at church, on the walking path. It's a small place. You, you kind of get to know everybody. <laughs> Gary Bauman. Communicate with the city of Grant. We've never had anybody from the council that's come and talked to the city of Grant. I showed up a while back and I asked and Miss Payne was in charge. She was the president at the time and she called and that was the first time people have called. There's the citizens of Grant, there's a whole group of them that can't stand Monomedi. And it's because of what happened with a school board president a few years ago. So I would say communicating with the city and telling them what's going on since they were kept in the dark for a long time. That's all. Okay. Kevin Donovan. Uh, well, the, the school board member has a, an interesting role. We're kind of between staff and, and the citizens we represent. So I, when people have said, well, what is it like to be a school board member, I'd say, I'm a cheerleader, and I'm one of the biggest cheerleaders of Monomedi schools. It's about listening to people in the organization, it's listening to people outside the organization, and it's telling the story to anyone who will listen. So it's getting involved in civic groups like Rotary, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Lake Links Project, all these different things going on. It's, it's just being involved and being a part of the community. And I live in Grant uh, for 23 years, and I actually have come to some of the meetings in the past uh, for various things. And uh, I love the old building that the uh, council resides in. So that's it. OK, any further comment on that? I, okay. I would have one thing to yes. say. Julie um, I would just say that our superintendent um, makes a great effort to connect with all of our city leaders through city leader meetings that we have four times a year. And so um, I, I'm, I just want to offer that up as a, as a statement of fact that our superintendent is trying to engage leaders from other communities, from all nine communities that encompass our school district because it's quite unique that way. Okay, any further? And we'll go on to the next question, and it will start with Kevin Donovan. What is the role of the student member the, on the school board? How would you encourage student participation in board work? Well, I think it's a wonderful thing that we have in Montemita. Not all school boards across the state uniformly have a student representative. But we've done this for as long as I've been on the board. It's very helpful to get, we get a school board report that uh, tells what's going on in the high school and uh, helps in all the activities and encourages to come to some of those activities. And he or she, uh, the people that we've had represent have been amazing. And uh, there's, I think, good benefit for the student representative because they learn about governance. And um, one of the things that the MSBA offers up, although we need to change our format, but for seniors that are uh, school board member representatives, there's a three thousand two $3,000 scholarships available for those students. So it's something, again, I want to try to work on how that works so that we can make sure our students get take advantage of those $3,000 scholarships. Thank you. Mike Chevalier. Um, well, I think it's really cool that we have a school board uh, a report a representative on the school board I think it's really fun to hear what's going on um, what they've been up to over time they talk about the the uh, what, what's happened the last few weeks before uh, the uh, the meeting um, I think that we also we have uh, we have participation from students teachers and community members in uh, a number of our committees so we are always in tune uh, we like like to think we're in tune with what's going on because we have these people in with us taking part They all took part in hiring our superintendent by the way the students the teachers 
administration and the board. They gave us feedback that helped form our decision. So, Julie McGraw. I think that it is it's great that we have some students on the school that we have a student rep on the school board. Um, last year, we actually encouraged the way that that student was selected to be a process that was changed. Um, it used to be only students that were on the student leadership council that were chosen to be the school board rep. And this year, we convinced the high school team that it should be from a student at large. So a student could serve several several years in a row and maybe get their their legs like a board member does to understand how the process works. I, but I do think that the board could do better to encourage them to understand how to engage and so they could offer feedback in some of our other discussions in a respectful way. Gary Bauman. Would that be fair if I just repeated what Julie just said? <laughs> uh, I would like to see more of the, the students involved at some of the Civic City of Grant meetings. You're in the City of Grant. I'm going to find out what it's like, the meetings, see how the government works. Um, I'm handicapped. I'd like to, one of the guys sitting back there, I'd like to hire you if I get hired as uh, the school board member to sit beside me and help me out. Thank you. Any further comment? Uh, well, we'll turn now to the closing statements, and they'll be in reverse order of the opening statements. So we begin with Julie McGraw. Okay. In closing, I hope you can see that I am a candidate who puts students first, who advocates locally and with state representatives for our district, who has high moral character who is a board member who works for the community and believes that the administration works for the board. I believe in transparency and decision-making process. I believe in educating the whole child, not just focusing on test scores. And I believe that our best days are ahead of us. I look forward to working with our new superintendent and my fellow board members to continue moving our district forward. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Donovan. It has been an honor and privilege to serve our communities on the school board these years. Here are a few things I think we must do for our students and their futures. We must ensure all of our students graduate. No excuses. Graduation is the gateway into a brighter future, one where aspirational goals can be realized. We must make sure all of our students succeed and thrive in a world which we may not see. We must make sure that our resources are equitable, excellent, and help all students in Montemayne I get the very best our communities have to offer. As a candidate for Montemayne High School Board, I would like your vote on November 6th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike Chevalier. Uh, well, um, I think that um, all I have to say is I've had a, a real blast being part of the board. It's been a very great learning experience for me because uh, decorum and uh, following the Roberts rules of uh, order and all that stuff is something that I, I have a lot of passion and so I've really learned a lot about containing myself and trying to rephrase things so you know take some passion out of it and I still have to work on that we, we all know that um, so but I think the best days are ahead of us our, our new superintendent and uh, we have new staff some new, new people putting new eyes on things our new strategic plan coming on and I think that one thing we should we just keep concentrating on what we're doing and making it better and, and focus keep focusing on equity and like to see some uh, diversity of teachers some uh, teachers of color Native Americans but I just think we're on the right path and we should keep going and making it better and better thank you now please vote for me <laughs> okay well you haven't run out of time you can keep going Okay, Gary Bauman. I think I bring a different perspective and that hasn't been seen on the board for a long time. I would have different opinions and I express myself on them, but I also work along with the other ones. I'm only one out of five or out of six votes if I'm elected. So that'll be pretty tough. But like I was saying before about me and being a director of a, one of the parties the director of the other party married my wife and I 
and I feel I was one of the luckiest people in the world when I met her 28 years ago, and I still do to this day. Um, but I think I can bring fresh ideas to the board. Thank you. Thank you. And that, that brings our forum to a close. Thank you to the candidates for your participation. Uh, to Suburban Community Channels for broadcasting uh, our event, City of Matamidi for using their City Hall, League volunteers, and you, the audience, for your attendance and your interest. Uh, remember to vote. Election Day is November 6th, and I've been told early voting starts tomorrow. So, thank you.